en question. Please be safe. Le Président. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise des débats. Once again, the floor is given to the prosecution Nous laissons à nouveau la parole à l'accusation pour la suite de key documents la, sa présentation des documents clés the sur le rôle de l'accusé. Vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when we broke, I was uh, halfway through a, a series of documents that confirm the time period during which Noon Chea uh, was the acting prime minister. And I appreciate uh, the chamber bearing, bearing with me through this uh, uh, more tedious group of documents. I will get through these quickly and we will move on to some hopefully more interesting documents. Um, E3 slash 287 is the uh, Phibus reports for May 1977, and there are two references in here. Uh, at Khmer 00-67-98-26 through 28, English 00 16 through 22, and French 00 Six nine eight four five one through five two. You will find a, a message of greeting sent by State Presidium President Q. Sampan and Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea to the leaders of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam on the 29th of April 1977. And in the same document at Khmer 00-67-98-49-50, English 00-16-81-51, French 00-69-84-6-2. You will find a message of congratulations message from State Presidium Chairman Hu Sampan and Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea sent to the Prime President and Prime Minister of Sri Lanka on the 22nd of May 1977. The next document, E3-2677, E3-2677, is a, a circular Le from the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, dated uh, the 5th of July, 1977. And let me just read uh, from a short excerpt from this report cité, uh, uh, from the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Quote, according to various reports, Salat Sar former Gen Secretary General of the Cambodian Salut Communist Party, who has been missing for a long time, qui, uh, and Pol Pot, who temps. was appointed as the head of the Cambodian government Et in Pot, April 1976, are one and the same person. Du gouvernement, Since September 1976, Mr. Nguyen Chea has been standing in for Pol Pot, but there has been no confirmation of the latter either being ill or being eliminated. Next is E3-143, E3-143. This is a Phibus collection for the month of September 1977. And this is almost one year after the announcement that Nguyen Chea would be serving as interim acting prime minister. There are four reports this month in which uh, he is referred to still as the acting prime minister. At Khmer, 00904132, English 00164124, is a August 
31, 1977, message of congratulations sent from acting Prime Minister Noon Chea to the Prime Minister of Malaysia. At Khmer, 00904133334, English, 00168727. Through two eight is a one September 1977 message of greetings from Acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea to the leaders of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. At Khmer 004137. 038, English 00168729 through 30 is a record of a September 1977, a 2 September 1977 speech by the Burmese Foreign Minister referring to his meeting with acting Prime Minister Nguyen Chea, end of quote. And in the same document, E3-143, at Khmer 008548 English 0016873838 39 and French 0068714646 you will see a 8 September 1977 message of greetings from Acting Prime Minister Moon Chea to the North Korean President Kim Il-sung. Your Honours, uh, next document is E3-486. E3-486. This document is a uh, 29 September 1977 report by the uh, French ambassador to Thailand who reports on a official announcement uh, from Radio Phnom Penh. Uh, and he reports uh, both on the announcement of the existence of the Communist Party of Kampuchea and on Pol Pot's a trip to China. And in regards to Mr. Nguyen Chea, the document reads as follows, quote, Pol Pot's reemergence raises a number of questions. As Prime Minister of Democratic Campuchia, since the March 76 elections, he had to resign from his post for health reasons on 26 September in the same year. It was Nguyen Chea, chairman of the Standing Committee of the Cambodian People's Representative Assembly, who took over as acting prime minister. And the last two documents on this issue, Your Honors, E3 slash 89, E3 slash 89 is a interview of Ng Sri that was conducted on the 17th of December 1996. And the reference I will read is from Khmer 00062424. Eight seven English zero zero four one seven six two six and French zero zero three three two seven zero seven and at this part of the interview Ingsri was asked about the public announcement that Pol Pot was ill. And what the truth was of this matter, Ng Suri responded as follows, quote, he was not sick, that's the truth. At that time, he really did have a crisis, he himself did not know what it was. 
continuing on, Ng Suri refers to the fact, so then I, first Deputy Prime Minister, had to go up and replace him, but no, Noon Chea replaced him. From what I know of the matter, there were discussions between Pol Pot and Noon Chea. There were discussions. And later, or also in 1996, uh, Ng Suri's Democratic National Union Movement, DINAM, issued a statement on the 8th of September 1996, which is document E3-86. And in the first section of that document, made the following statement, quote, In fact, when Pol Pot, then Prime Minister, made a false declaration about his pretend illness in 1976. It was not His Excellency King Suri, then Deputy Prime Minister in charge of Foreign Affairs, who assumed the post of Prime Minister ad interim. On the contrary, it was Noon Chea, the personality number two in the party, and then President of the National Assembly, who was designated by Pol Pot to replace him as Prime Minister ad interim. Premier ministre ad interim. Now move on to another group of documents. Je vais à présent. And the next group of documents I will present are a few of the telegrams and reports that were sent to Noon Chea during the Democratic Kampuchea period. These documents are relevant because the subjects of these telegrams and reports reflect the various roles and responsibilities of Noon Chea in the party and in the DK regime. The first two documents I will present uh, indicate or show that Noon Chea had responsibility in relation to forced movements Montre of the population. E3 slash 154, E3 slash 154 is a document un, the chamber is well familiar with. Que la bien. It is a, a 30, the 30 November 1975 telegram, uh, telegram from the East Zone Secretary that uh, discusses the uh, movement of the Cham population uh, out of areas of the East Zone. And I will not read this document uh, again as a, it has been covered many times. I will simply note that the document is addressed to Pol Pot and that Noon Chea is one of the few people who is copied on uh, this matter. Second is document E3-1188, E3-1188, and your honors, this is a, a telegram uh, from a northeast zone cadre boot to respective brother dated uh, the 29th of January 1976, copied to Noon Chea, and the subjects in this telegram in paragraph number two include the evacuation of people from Laos who were then moved into a number of villages and communes. It also discusses, discusses some people who were moved into a village uh, named Saup Village. And the report talks about, in section 3B, indicates, quote, the biographies of all key, peop key people in the village were compiled. The next group of telegrams uh, that I would like to refer your honors to 
are some telegrams that show Nguyen Chea's responsibility for military matters. And there are a five, a series of five telegrams that were sent between the dates of 24 September 1976 and 6 October 1976. The document numbers are E3-1122, E3-1122, E3-1123, E3-1124, E3-1125, and E3-1126, consecutive numbers, E3 numbers. Each of these telegrams is a report from the Division 164 Deputy Secretary named Dim. And these, these are presented, Your Honors, because of the people who are copied on the telegram. For each of these five telegrams, there are only two people who are copied outside of Division 164. One is Brother Q Son Sen, and the other is Brother Nguyen Chea. These documents are thus submitted to show that Nguyen Chea did have a military role in relation to this division, to the center divisions. And as further confirmation of that, I would present document E3-1135, E3-1135, the, as I mentioned, the series of telegrams we just looked at from Division 164 that were copied only to Nguyen Chea and Son Sen ran from the period of late September to early October. And document E3-1135 is a document dated 19 October 1976. And in this report, which is from the Division 164 Secretary, Mia Smut, Mia Smut writes a report to Son Sen, Brother 89. The subject of the report is a cadre's wife who had been in the hospital but had disappeared with a number of people. And the relevance of this document, the reason it is put forth as particularly important, is the note that, was writ that is written on the left side uh, on the day after the report was sent by Division 160 164 Secretary Mutt. On the next day, Son Sen, under his alias Q, forwards the report, and the person he forwards it to is Bang Nguyen, Nguyen Chea. And in his note to Nguyen Chea, point number two requests to search for the people who are missing related to this matter. This series of documents, therefore, Your Honors, is put before you to show the responsibility of Nguyen Chea for matters relating to the military, including security issues relating to personnel and cadres. The next two documents, Your Honors, are uh, two reports uh, from the same date, the 12th of October, 1976. Uh, these reports are from the Secretary of Sector 105, Lang, and the first of these is E3 slash 1192, 
E3 slash 1192. And in this telegram, uh, Lang Dans writes directly, Lang directly to Brother Nguyen, au frère Nguyen to request a number of matters. Pour and chose. in the second telegram, telegram which is document E3 slash 1189, E3 slash 1189, a telegram from the same date from Sector 105 Le Secretary addressed to beloved and missed two brothers. And Noon Chea's name is the only name that appears in the distribution list. Oh, Lang writes, quote, le nom de Chea le I wish to ask you about the opening of a party school. When can Ankar open such school? Quand une école? These documents, Your Honor, show Noon Chea's role and responsibility relating to this autonomous sector that reported directly to the center. And it shows his responsibility for political education and party schools. The next document I would present is document E3 slash 1154. E3 slash 1154. This is a letter written by a cadre from the logistics office of the general staff named Cole, dated the 15th of March, 1977. And Cole's letter is addressed to Brother Paul, Brother Nguyen, and Brother Pim, referring to Sao Pim, the East Zone Secretary. The letter uh, reads as follows. I will read a number of passages from it. Dear respected brother, first of all, please forgive me for writing directly to you, which is contrary to the protocol. While you are extremely overwhelmed by great deal of leadership tasks. Well respected Bong, I trust in you who are the perceptive and fair Ankar of the party. I abide by and trust in the party, so please let, let me report my own business to the party as follows. Well respected Bong, on the evening of 14 March 1977, Brother Tum, this is a reference to Sit Che, alias Tum, who was the Deputy Secretary of the General Staff. Brother Tum personally called me to work with him. In his opinion, what was important was that Ankar told him that the enemy had implicated me. Ankar wants his clarification if I got involved by accident so that I could report to the party and ask the party for tolerance. With this regard, I informed him I was not involved with the enemy betraying the party. Continuing uh, two paragraphs below, quote, I do not trust Bong Tum with this regard, which was the reason that I did not report it to him, and I am writing directly to you. I sent a letter through Ya at the logistics section to you to report inappropriate activities of Tum in order for the party to re-educate him so that he will not commit more serious acts. At that time, I did not know that Ya was a traitor. Continuing in the next paragraph, quote, Well respected Bong, I leave my fate to the party. If the party considers me a traitor linking with Ya, I will not deny it. However, based on my past, present, and future stance, 
regardless of any situation. I will always love and respect the party and respect the party line. We will never betray the party. If I have any flaws in my daily work performance, I agree that the collective and the party re-educate me. Well-respected Bong, please forgive me for any awkwardness in this report and other errors we could not grasp. I completely trust the party. I leave my life to the party. Dated the 15th of March, 1977. For the record, Your Honors, Tuch Hang, alias Cole, entered S21 on the 2nd of May, 1977, and was executed on the 9th of December, 1977. This document, Your Honors, is submitted because it is particularly relevant to show the role and authority of Noon Chea in relation to the arrest and purges of cadres. The next document is E3-892. E3-892. This is a report dated the 29th of October, 1977, from the East Zone Secretary under his alias Chon, addressed to Office 870, copied on this was Uncle Nguyen. And let me read from the last paragraph of the telegram. Quote, we would like to know what Office 870 is going to do with Vietnamese caught at villagers' houses in Tadev village. If Office 870 wants these Vietnamese, we will send them. Now they are kept being interrogated. This document is submitted, Your Honor, to show Nguyen Chea's responsibility again for matters relating to security. Next, E3 slash 181. E3 slash 181. This is a report dated the second, or I'm sorry, a report dated the 14th of February 1978 from Son Sen, using the alias 47, addressed to respected, beloved, and missed brother, the two people who are shown on the distribution list, our grand uncle, referring to Pol Pot, and grand uncle Nguyen. And in regards to the substance of this report, I will just read from one Item, item number five, which reads as follows. Comrade Tal captured two Yuan heads, age 17 and 27. They were sent to S21. Next is document E3-867. E3-867. This is also a report from Son Sen under alias 47. This one is dated the 20th of March, 1978. And copied on this report are uncle, uncle Nguyen, brother Van, and brother Vorn. In paragraph two of this report, There is a following report, quote, we destroyed approximately 100 enemy combatants. We captured three, two were shot and killed because they jumped into the river. One of them is kept to be sent to 21 this evening.
And at the end of this telegram, Son Sen reports that, quote, we continued fighting mainly using landmines and spikes, end quote. Next, document E3 slash 519, E3 slash 519. This is a, a telegram dated 29 March 1978 from Comrade Pak, referring to Central Zone Secretary Kai Pak, addressed to Committee 870. The substance of the telegram is a number of individuals who were caught and arrested and comrade or the central zone secretary is seeking information from Ankar on these individuals. The significance, the reason this document is put forward is that the only person identified who was copied on this telegram is Uncle Nguyen. This document, therefore, again, demonstrates Nguyen Chea's responsibility with regard to security and matters of discipline of cadres. Document E3 slash 1144, E3 slash 1144. This is a document I presented the other day, a, the uh, 5 September 1977 report from the North Zone Secretary, say, to Committee 870, and uh, which discusses uh, the uncovery of enemies, including former officials, policemen, or soldiers of the previous regime. I will not repeat the parts I read the other day. I simply note that one of the people who is copied and included in the distribution list is Uncle Nguyen, Nguyen Chea. Next, the document E3 slash 898. E3 slash 898. This is a 11 December 1977 a telegram from telegram North Zone Secretary Say to Committee 870. C, and it reads as follows. It is requested that Seamry and Banti Srey districts are merged as one because they are adjacent. Seam Reap district comprises 40,000 people. They are mainly new people to be distributed to other districts. The population of Banti Srey is 20,000, mainly old people. It will be unification among them only if the two districts are made into one. It is easy to be controlled. This document is submitted because one of the people, uh, leaders copied on this matter is Uncle Nguyen, Nguyen Chea. And therefore, we submit this document as showing Nguyen Chea's role and responsibility relating to the treatment of new people uh, and locations and relocations of people. The last three telegrams I will present are three telegrams in which Nguyen Chea is not only copied, Ici, non uh, but there is also a handwritten note in the upper left plus, corner of each of these documents, which states Uncle Nguyen. For the record, Oncle the three Nguyen. documents are E3 slash 1077, E3 slash 1077, and this is a a document that has been presented before. It is 
the 10 April 1978 telegram report from the North Zone Secretary Tsai, which has extensive discussion about purges, in particular of purges of Sector 103. And in, if you look at the, uh, on the screen, uh, at the Khmer version of this document, you will see in the upper left-hand corner a handwritten note which states Uncle Nguyen. Next, E3-1008. E3-1008. This is a telegram dated the 12th of April, 1978, from an individual named Rote. Once again, in the upper left-hand corner of the document, you will see Uncle Nguyen's name written in hand. And the last of these reports is E3 slash 156, E3 slash 156. This is a telegram, uh, the telegram from Sector 105 Secretary Sao Sarun to respected brother dated the 23rd of April 1978. It is a telegram that I have previously presented that discusses the arrest of a, the chairman of the repair factory and who had been implicated in a confession and requests instructions or advice from the party on the matter. And again, uh, in the upper left-hand corner of this document, you will see handwriting which states Uncle Nguyen. These documents are submitted to show Nguyen Chea's particular role and responsibility in relation to these matters. I will now turn to some documents that relate to Nunchea's role and responsibilities relating to the military and security apparatus in the Democratic Kampuchea. Nunchea uh, has made a number of statements that show his role in matters related to security, such as problems of internal enemies or purported spies and traitors. And I would like to start by playing another video clip um, so the AV booth can get ready. This will be clip number four. Clip number four. And, Your Honors, um, this comes from the same uh, video that I had presented earlier from a video titled Additional Footage Nunchea Interview E186.1R. This excerpt is from 19 minutes and 11 seconds to 19 minutes and 44 seconds. And it describes, in this part of the uh, interview, Nunchea describes a conversation he had with Pol Pot after liberation. Uh, with your leave, Mr. President, I would ask the AV booth to now play clip number four, which is titled The Problem of Spies. Le President, uh, you may proceed in this and AV both officers are now directed to make sure that this video clip can de be displayed on the comme demandé par l'accusation. เพศมันจึกเพศมันล้อในក្នុងជួរកម្មវិធីយើងเพศអីអំណាចអំញ្ញាអញ្ញាស្រីសារាស្រាទៅមើលគ្មានលក់ប្រជាជនចៃរុយ
Your Honours, uh, Yoon Chae's role in the party policies relating to the identification and elimination of enemies and his role and responsibility, including his role and responsibility for S21, are matters on which he has made significant statements during his interviews with Tet Sambat and others. And I would like to play now another video clip for the AV booth. This one is clip number five. Clip number five. Uh, it is a document E93 slash 7.3R. V zero zero seven one seven zero four eight. It is an interview by Tet Sambat that is entitled Noon Chea on Noon Killing Chea Traitors. And Mr. President, at this time, we'd like Monsieur to ask President, the AV booth to play clip number five, which is titled Killing Traitors. President, President, uh, yes, uh, I the post officers and the director to make sure that this video number is put up on comme the screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. มันเมนโดยตาจังมันเรื่องธรรมดาเด้มันเมนเรื่องบัดบัดบังตึกใดมาอย่างอามปีจังอามนะเรื่องบัดบังตึกใดประเทศมุ่ยจิตกัมพู
but others knew and they admitted them in our meetings and they were accepted. We didn't kill many, we killed only the bad people, not the good. Your Honours, the statements on this subject that Noon Chea has provided to Tet Sambat that were published in his book are even more detailed and direct. And I will now read from a, a few more excerpts uh, from that book, document E152.2. And the first is at Khmer 0085-8308-09, English 0075-7520-21, and French 0084-9414-14. Let me repeat the Khmer number, 0085-8308-09. This excerpt reads as follows, quote, The enemies were everywhere, and they were blamed for everything. According to Nguyen Chea, there were Americans, Thais, Vietnamese, and French, so determined to overthrow the Khmer Rouge that they threw away rice, killed peasants, and created general havoc in the regime, aided by Cambodian conspirators. A specific quote is then attributed to Nguyen Chea. Quote, we knew that there were many enemies hiding in our regime and planning to destroy our policies. So we were very busy trying to find the enemies. The passage continues. In this culture of fear, Cambodians were encouraged to root out traitors and name spies. Eventually, neighbors turned against neighbors, sisters turned against brothers, and husbands turned against wives. Another specific quote attributed to Nguyen Chea then follows, quote, there were many spies in Cambodia. They had been hiding in Cambodia and destroying the internal party for a long time, Nguyen Chea said, pointing his index finger for emphasis, end of quote. Next reference, Your Honor, from the book is at Khmer 00. 85-8310-11, English 0075-7521, French 0084-9416. This passage reads as follows, quote, even for Nguyen Chea, the killing of enemies is sometimes difficult to explain. When we once asked him why the Khmer Rouge didn't put the so-called enemies in prison for life, why the leaders felt they had to be killed, he replied, quote, that is an easy question to ask but a difficult one une to answer. Poser, After a pause, he continued, quote, but at poursuite, that time, we had no proper prisons, and if we kept them, they would prison. spread and produce si their eggs, gardés, and many more would have been killed, end of quote. Next reference is from Khmer 00858340, English 
French 0084 9435 through 36, which reads as follows. Quote, Nunchea said he was not particularly disturbed when his former comrades and friends were executed, attributing a quote to Nunchea, quote, the party decided to kill them because they were betraying the party and the nation. I was not scared or sad when they were killed. They had done wrong and betrayed us, so they received the kind of treatment they deserved. We were friends, but friendship and political work are separate." End of quote. And in their discussions, Nunchea admitted Tet Sambat that he was involved in decisions to purge party cadres throughout the DK regime and that he assumed direct responsibility for S21 in the fall of 1977. This passage is from Khmer 0085831010. English 00757521, French 00849416, reads as follows, quote, For the first half of the Khmer Rouge rule, Nunchea didn't have direct control over S21, but as one of the top leaders of the movement, he was involved in decisions to purge top cadre. And when Khmer Rouge Defense Minister Son Sen was dispatched to take care of border conflicts with Vietnam and growing tension with the Eastern Zone in the fall of 1977, Nunchea became the de facto head of the interrogation center, according to Brother Number Two and according to testimony from Deutsch in the spring of 2009. End of quote. Nunchea has discussed and admitted to Tet Sambat his role in discussions on the fate of high-ranking cadres accused of being traitors, such as East Zone Secretary and fellow Standing Committee member Sao Pim. The next excerpt I will read is from Khmer 00858381. English 00757536, French 00849446. And that passage or excerpt from the book reads as follows. Quote, there had been other times when Cadre imprisoned in S21 accused Sao Pim of being a fellow traitor. But Nunchea defended him, saying the accusations weren't true. In the end, though, Nunchea succumbed to the allegations against a man he thought of as his brother and left him to a traitor's fate. According to reports Nunchea received, which meant confessions extracted from S21, Sao Pim was selling rice to Vietnam without asking the center if he could do so. End of quote. And in regards to Khoi Thun, the Minister of Commerce and former Secretary of the North Zone, Ministre du Commerce et ancien secrétaire de la zone nord. Khmer 00 à la page 85 00 85 83 53 50 English 00 
75-75-34 through 35, and French 00 through 43. At this part of the book, Nunchea told Tetsambat as follows. Quote, Suspicion was cast on those close to Khoi Tun, including Dun, who headed the party's center office, known as Office 870. Soon after Khoi Tun was taken into custody, Dun was arrested. Nun Chea said Dun was Khoi Tun's man, as Khoi Tun had pushed for his people to be appointed to the center office. In his confession, Doin accused Khoi Tun of being a longtime member of the CIA. Again, Noon Chea's accusations reflect what Doin said in his confessions. Doin destroyed equipment, and when he did deliver goods, it was only to his people. Noon Chea said, matter of factly, that Dun was killed because he was, quote, unquote, Khoi Tun's string, continuing a quote from Noon Chea. Khoi Tun was the first one we found had betrayed the organization, and we were very surprised, Noon Chea said. After we arrested him, we saw that there were many people under him, and we knew that our internal organization was not clean. Uh, Mr. President, uh, if this is a convenient point, I can pause here and pick up after the lunch break. The President. Thank you. It is now appropriate moment for the adjournment. The chamber will adjourn until 1.30 p.m. Security personnel are now directed to bring Mr. Kim Sung Pong to his holding cell downstairs and have him return to the courtroom before 1.30 p.m. The court is adjourned.